Resilience, focus, discipline, courage. Some of the key ingredients in manifesting your vision into a reality. Join me as we delve into what it takes to make your mark. Hello and welcome to the Make Your Mark talk show. Today we have a very special guest. Now I'm sure y'all noticed that there is this an immaculate, immaculate piece of art here behind us. We have the wonderful Kofi Frempong here with us today. Welcome to the show. Thank you. So Kofi is a visual artist. Yes, he actually painted this. I believe he said it took two years to print to paint. Wow, two years of discipline in that. We're gonna get into that. And but you also are a community health worker. Yes. And founder of Freedom Fridays, which is a movement rooted in building community. Yes. So Kofi, I've read a little bit about you. I know a little bit. I follow you on Instagram. I've seen your art. Um, I, I, I just I'm amazed by your work. And you're so you're so calm. I feel this calm, very calm spirit from you. Whereas I'm like the hyper bunny on this other side here. But tell us, tell our viewers about yourself and how your whole movement came around. Um, well, you guys know my name is Kofi Frempong, uh, also known as Kofi's Arts. Um, born in Ghana, uh, moved to France for a year, and then Montreal, and then ended up in Toronto. Um, grew up in Jane Finch for most of my life. Um, I'm a visual artist, um, community health worker, husband, father of two. Uh, yeah, that's that's it. <laughs> Gosh, come on. You, so in terms of community health worker, tell us a little bit about that. Like, what mm -hmm. do you do exactly? Because I know that there's social workers, youth workers, mm -hmm. all of that. I know you're giving yourself a lot less credit <laughs> than you deserve. So tell us about your job there. Um, so my job is centered around uh, the social determinants of health. Mm. Um, so basically anything outside of um, uh, medical needs that you might have that affect your health, employment, housing, education, um, any kind of resources that you might need. Um, it's usually my job to connect people to those resources. So I, I work um, in conjunction with doctors, social workers, nurse practitioners, dietitians. It's, yeah. It's, okay. Mm. So who would be somebody that would use your service? Um, well, first, anybody who lives within the catchment area, the Black Creek community. Okay. Um, any Anybody who... Uh, is looking for access to healthcare um, and experiencing barriers, newcomers, um, people from low-income um, families, basically anybody who lives in within the, the catchment area. Okay, yeah. and how long have you been doing that for? Mm, for about maybe like 14 years. Wow, yeah. 14 years. So you've really watched the system evolve. Absolutely. Okay. Mm. And now tell us a little bit about your visual artist piece. With the visual arts, uh, I fell in love with art at the age of five. Mm. We were in France in a hotel room, and I was watching my dad just doodle and just fell in love with it, the line work, everything about it. Um, so naturally, I picked it up. I wasn't trying to be an artist or anything. I just loved seeing what he created, and I wanted to create the same thing. Um, so I just kept doing it. Eventually, I got better and better. Um, fast forward to high school, um, I was recognized as one of the best artists in my school. Um, that came with a lot of pressure. Um, the pressure of being one of the best um, people that could draw really well. Um, it didn't allow me to jump into uh, different aspects of art. Uh, so painting was something that um, I experienced a lot of anxiety around. I would skip a lot of my painting assignments, um, exams, to the point where in grade 10 I had about a 35% in um, art class. Um, managed to get to college, I'm doing design foundations, academic probation, again because I'm skipping painting assignments. Um, 
switch programs into art fundamentals. Again, academic probation. You know what, Kofi? We think you need to explore a different career path. Um, so I ended up leaving the program after finishing um, one year. And um, working in the community has always been a passion. And I sort of just like fell into it. So started working at the Boys and Girls Club um, and picking up like several part-time jobs working in the community. Finally, I get hired at Black Creek Community Health Center. Um, life just happens. Before I know it, it's like six, seven years and I haven't really been doing wow. art. Yeah. Um, I get married, we have our first child, we buy our first house and it's just, life just happens. Yep. Um, and no art. And no art. So within that time, I'm also supporting my, my wife um, figure out what her calling is. Um, and literally the day that she told me that she got into her midwifery program at Ryerson, um, I drew my first picture hmm. and put it on Instagram, immediately got a lot of love, and I just kept going. Uh, keep in mind at this time, I still wasn't painting. Um, two years prior to that, I created Freedom Fridays. It's basically a platform for artists to come together and for our community to celebrate artists. Um, and with that, my, my guiding philosophy was that basically just get out outside of your comfort zone, try different things so that you can grow as a person. So for me to create that and you know, not do the same. It would be really hypocritical. So um, my first painting was in front of a crowd of about 500 people, maybe a little bit more. Um, first 10 minutes, really nerve wracking because you know, so many eyes on you. And at some point, something just clicked. Um, I just let go and just really started to appreciate the process of creating and not worry about creating a masterpiece, just creating. And then from there, I realized this is my process and it brought me back to when I first fell in love with drawing. My only focus was just to create and that was it. So from there, um, I just got better. <laughs> Clearly. Uh, <yeah. laughs> I had a three year plan in regards to my art business Year one is really like strengthen my art, um, build a platform, and year three would be to start selling. Um, I accomplished a lot of that within year one. Good so, for you. Yeah, so I'm sure questions will come up, but yeah, there's been a lot that has happened since. Okay, and then Freedom Fridays, mm -hmm. what inspired that? Um, I like to build positive and safe spaces. And for me, I, I think art is a, a really good vehicle to do those things. So like you have music, food, dancing, different forms of art. When you have that in the space and people are genuinely supporting each other and celebrating each other's talents, um, it just opens it up for so many things to happen. Um, and within the social sector, a lot of agencies have issues engaging people in a genuine way. Um, for me, it was, let me create Freedom Fridays, get people in a space where they're genuinely celebrating each other, building trust, and when you get to that point, people will start sharing what their issues are. And because we are a community health center and we have access to all these resources, it's, it's an easier way to make those plugs. And of course, the bigger picture is we're building community. Wow, that's amazing. I love that, creating safe spaces. On that note, Kofi, we are going to take a quick break and we will be right back. From a tender age, I recognized that I was not the average girl. I was always opinionated, outspoken, and for the most part, unapologetic. I was born to lead, to inflict positive change, to serve. I was born a leader. Harnessing this internal drive, 
led me to spearheading several businesses while unlocking potential within large organizations in director roles throughout the city. While on this quest, I discovered my love for people and passion for personal development. Throughout my career, I have mentored hundreds of individuals, both personally and professionally, channeling my belief of self-care and with an avid love for fitness. Daily, I nurture my mind, body, and soul, embracing the very act of self-love. I truly do believe that you cannot give what you don't have. With a commitment to living on purpose and within my purpose, my personal mantra is to be better than I am. Hello and welcome back to the Make Your Mark talk show. Today we've got a visual artist in the house. We've got Kofi Frempong, and this beautiful piece of art is by him. So, Kofi, I mean, I could think, I could look at this and say, my goodness, just being able to create this is a huge accomplishment. But what would you say is one of your biggest accomplishments? Uh, starting my art business. Okay. Um, and it's not so much the business aspect of it, it's the fact that I'm doing something um, in a way that's very genuine. Um, so, that's beautiful. Thank you. So with my career as a community health worker, that's me um, at a job. So when I leave my job, I'm still doing the same thing. Um, so starting a business with my art, again, it allows me to be myself in all spaces, literally. Awesome, that's amazing. So Kofi, we talked about a little bit earlier that you know, you picked, you decided to start your business once your wife found her passion, what she, her purpose mm -hmm. as to what she wanted to do. How did that help to take you back to actually picking up a brush now and deciding that you, you know what, I'm going to start now? Um, I, I guess watching my parents, mm, um, okay. growing up, um, I've seen, I've, I witnessed my parents switch roles. So at one point, um, my mom was working. She was supporting the family financially. And my dad was going to school. And then roles reversed. Um, my dad was more of the breadwinner. And again, my mom um, was also the breadwinner. But um, a, a huge, a larger part of the financial um, responsibilities fell on my dad after that. Um, so watching that growing up, bringing that into my relationship, it's like 100% trust. So by me focusing on supporting my wife, figure out what she wanted, I always knew that I would be good. Um, but I also knew that once um, she got to where she was going, uh, that same kind of support would be reciprocated. Um, so yeah, that, that really helped once we figured that part out. I love how you used your parents' uh, relationship mm -hmm. and it helped to really frame, it was a good role model, first of all, Absolutely. for you to look at, mm -hmm. but then it also framed the whole meaning of trust and um, you know, building together. Mm -hmm. Because building together, a lot of it does come from trust, mm -hmm. making sure that you know, each person, each party in that relationship is able to bring to the table equally but then at most importantly, support equally. Mm. So moving into what were some times when, within starting your business mm. that you felt like giving up? You felt some sense of self-doubt. You felt that, you know what, maybe this is not for me. Mm. Because it, what it sounds like is like the art, visual art for you has kind of been like your side hustle. Mm. Right, right? Whereas you still are a community health worker. So you always had that comfort of going back here yeah. versus moving to this platform where it would just be solely like dependent on you Got to you. provide. Um, I struggle to call it a side hustle. Like I feel like I, I'm doing two things full time. Okay. Um, in regards to questioning if it was for me, I don't think I've ever had that. Um, however, there were a lot of moments where I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. 
Um, and we all experience that. Just okay. to put that disclaimer out there, yeah. we all have those moments. Yeah. And not having a mentor um, mm. in this field was very difficult. Um, yeah. It, so there's a lot of errors, you know, trial and error, but yep. there's a lot of errors. Um, but luckily, just being able to bounce back and go back to what feels right, what feels good, um, I find that it it helps to fix a lot of the mistakes that I've made. Okay, so you spoke, you, you touched on the fact of, you look at it as two full-time jobs. Mm -hmm. Now, did you find that that helped you to stay on track? Um, what helps me to stay on track is, again, just that it needs to be genuine. It needs to feel like I'm being myself. Um, so with that in mind, it absolutely helps me to stay on track. Okay, mm -hmm. and you also touched on another point there where did you ever seek out mentors? Were you looking for a mentor that was an artist or did you not believe in them? Because in being a mentor myself, one of the things I come across a lot is, and I've had to make peace with, is not everybody believes in mentorship, True. right? Mm -hmm. So you have to first be open to receiving mentorship and all mentorship means is having some having kind of like a compass mm -hmm. someone that can help to guide you but not do the work for you and sometimes it gets a little twisted where people think mentorship is people are going to tell them what to do whereas mentorship is more so along the lines of a support system but also to help you to 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 fast forward your steps a little bit instead of you having to make all the mistakes along the way mm. now naturally and organically you are going to make certain mistakes which you do need to learn yeah. lessons through but at the same time a mentor is going to help you to, to just propel you forward faster mm. so that way they kind of become that compass that guide for you so was there ever a struggle where was the struggle that you needed to you needed a mentor but couldn't find one or you didn't believe in mentorship or is it that you just, you, you were lost and you didn't even knew, you know you needed a mentor. So it's kind of like, you know, a, you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. It's, it's a couple of things. Um, one, it's my philosophy around mentorship. Like how you explain it, I think is beautiful. A lot of people don't necessarily share that um, definition. Some people see it as, um, I'm the mentor, you're the mentee, you gotta do it my way, um, and this is the right way because it worked for me. Um, my idea of men mentorship is more aligned with yours. It's more somebody to guide you, but at the end of the day, you're doing you your way. Um, so in that respect, it's been, it was really difficult to find that. Um, and then just the, things that I was doing in regards to my art career, a lot of people thought I was further ahead than I was. Um, so then there's this intimidation factor. Mm -hmm. um, it's unfortunate, but I got the sense that some people just didn't want to give you um, access to resources or information because you might take their spot. Yep. Um, and again, that's contrary to my belief. I really genuinely feel like there's enough for everybody, um, especially in the art sector. Like, it's so subjective. So um, you can have a large following of people that love your work. There might be um, a bigger following that might not even be feeling your stuff, but um, they'll appreciate another artist more. Um, so I don't know. <laughs> it just, to me, it doesn't make sense. Um, there's a lot of opportunities out there and there's a lot of um, love for artists. Mm -hmm. um, there definitely isn't a shortage. Um, so I found that to be a little bit frustrating, more so than anything else. Just people not really seeing that it's, you don't need one top artist in the city and yeah. And I mean, I can totally contest to that mm -hmm. where, you know, there is enough at the table for everyone mm -hmm. um, and and getting into the world of becoming an entrepreneur I felt that from you know I've gone to, I've gone to a lot of networking events in the city like tons mm -hmm. ones that sometimes I ask myself like why am I here 
right? But I wanted to get myself really exposed to the environment. And in walking into certain spaces, I could really feel the pushback from people. Because mm. you walk in and people are looking at you and they're like, who are you? Right, and because you're, not, I'm not my personality naturally. I'm not going to be all over you, mm -hmm. so I'm not going to worship you. Like a lot of people, only work on that praise. Not to that too, yeah. Right, <laughs> they only work on oh my god, call me, oh my god. Like you're never going to get that from me. I worship one God, mm -hmm. and that's it. So I am never going to have that. I can love you and appreciate you, and you will see that through my actions. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to glorify you. Yeah. You're man. So. I felt that because I didn't have that approach, um, I don't know if it's a more starstruck approach. Is that what they're looking for? I don't exactly what you mean. Yeah. You know, because I don't have that approach, I come across as standoffish, I could be cocky, whereas I'm really just observing the scene and taking it all in, and I'm really trying to observe the atmosphere to see, you know, how can I actually bring and enhance this mm -hmm. and support this, but in, 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 instead of doing that, I was perceived more as, you know, who is this girl? You know, oh, you know what? Let's just kind of tuck her away over here. And I was okay with that because for me walking in the space, I was like, I already can see the players. My last job, I went into different locations, multiple jobs, I would evaluate different locations. And I would have to go in and work with managers and see who they are and see what's going and see if they're leading their teams properly. Mm -hmm. So right away, I have the ability to identify things very quickly gotcha. without anybody saying a word to me. I could tell you what's happening in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And they, didn't, they don't know me. They don't know my background. They don't know where I come from. But they would, you could feel the judgment without being said. So, you know, it's unfortunate that, especially sometimes people that take up a lot of space, mm -hmm. Um, don't use their power in the right way in order to propel people forward because you could be easily pushing someone or or, or, or trying to neglect somebody that I can actually enhance you yeah. and push you forward. Um, and I've seen it too in the mentorship world where people approach mentorship, well, this is the way I got there. That's great for you. But in leading people, one of the first things I've learned is I could provide you with knowledge, just like going to college or university, but I can't do it for you. You can take all the information and then curate that to fit you. Yeah. And that's really what it's about. Yeah. So thank you for sharing that. But on that note, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. Hello, and we are back on the Make Your Mark talk show, and we are having some great discussion today, some real calm discussion with Kofi Frempong. And, you know, Kofi, just before we left on the break, we were kind of talking about, you know, really understanding your place within the community, in a sense, yeah. and not putting up a front, and that there is enough at the table for everyone. Um, so I wanted to kind of move the segment into you know, you've obviously you've had a strong family base, uh, starting with your parents, kind of framing, you know, what relationships would look like for you, um, and then transferring that now onto your family. I wanted to talk about a little bit about your support systems and what that looks like in order for you to, in your words, almost have two full-time jobs as a visual artist and also working as a community health worker. Okay. Um, so... First, I definitely like always acknowledge my wife first. Okay. Um, we are a team. Um, I love that. <laughs> I love that. So the support from her comes in many different forms. It could be disagreements that we have, um, things that she notices that could be a lot better and might push back. Um, from a financial aspect, um, Again, we're partners, so when there's something that needs to be invested in my art or her um, her school, the negotiation or the conversation is like very fluid. Um, we don't have any issues with that. Um, from a cheerleading perspective, she's there. She basic she's basically there in every way. Um, so I always have to acknowledge her first. Um, and then, of course, my sister, who's six years younger than me, 
um, anything I need, basically I can call her and she'll do it. If it's to pick up artwork from like my printer, like she's there. Um, and then my close friends, again, they mimic the same thing that my, my sister needs. If I don't have my car, they will drive me like two hours. Oh, that's amazing. And um, yeah, so it's not so much what they do for me, it, because anything that I ask, um, I feel comfortable enough that like they'll get it done for me. Um, and then it's just the support from strangers who share my work on Instagram, Facebook, um, tell their friends, come to my events, um, even ghost followers who don't interact online but send me DMs to explain to me how my my art is affecting them. Um, in, yeah, in, in regards to support, I feel like I've been very fortunate and it comes from everywhere. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. You have been blessed. Absolutely. That is amazing. Mm -hmm. So how do you stay holistically resilient? Um, can you rephrase that? What is so that? essentially, I know I put that in a pretty form there. I packaged that up. Let me depackage that for gotcha. you. So how do you take care of yourself? How do you build resiliency? So for many people, they use different ways, um, whether it's through meditation, mm -hmm. uh, some people work out. Like, what does that look like for you? So you have a great support system, mm -hmm. but still I know that you would have to still deal with the inner Kofi gotcha. that nobody can see. So mm -hmm. how do we get there? Like, how do you, how do you, what, how, what's your remedy for building, building up, building you, building self? Um, from an emotional and mental standpoint, um, again, it's just staying genuine to enjoying the process. Um, with that, it allows me not to compare myself to other artists and kind of beat myself up for it. In regards to my business, I know that things are happening at a pace um, that's reasonably comfortable for me. And if I feel like I'm, you know, being complacent or stagnant, then I step up. Um, it's also important for me to build like positive and safe spaces. So this conversation right now feels that way. Um, where it's within my control, I like to put myself in those situations. So my circle of friends, um, they we all have a certain standard of a way that we treat each other. Um, and that's like being really supportive. So knowing that I have friends and family who are that way with me, um, it definitely lends itself to a healthier mental <laughs> and emotional yeah. state. Um, I think where I'm falling short is um, the physical part. So <laughs> uh, I'm not working out as much as I should. Um, I'm not sleeping as much as I should. I'm definitely not eating right. Um, and where that's problematic for me is my energy levels pretty much affect everything. Uh, I find that when I have a lot of energy, there's so many things that just take off in regards to my business, so many connections that I make, and times when I'm absolutely drained. You know, you'll stay in bed for a little bit longer, mm -hmm. you'll vegetate in, in front of um, the TV. It's, yeah. Um, so yeah, emotional, mental, I'd say um, I'm good, as good as I can be. But you're working on it. Yeah, and everything else, I'm also working on that. Okay, mm. okay. Well, I mean, they say the first step is acknowledging, mm. right, that you, you, you have an opportunity, and as long as you're putting things in place, I mean, your support system sounds awesome, yeah. which is amazing that, you know, you have such a strong support system, um, and I love what you said in creating safe spaces mm -hmm. because it really is important. A lot of times we put ourselves in spaces, but they're not safe, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. and, and then it's to de demyth what safe is. So I love that that is actually part of your job as well as a community health worker is to create safe spaces as well. Yeah. So I have a, just a, such a random question. I'm gonna ask you what, because this, this girl is looking at me with one eye and I'm like, what inspired you to draw this piece and paint this piece? 
Okay, so this started at AfroFest. Oh, okay. Um, I, I just showed up one day. I don't even know if I should say this on. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, uh, this is off the record. <laughs> so I, I rolled up on, um, to AfroFest, set up my stuff, and just started painting. Um, I started with a backdrop, which is yellow, white, and blue. Mm -hmm. And I left it for a year. I didn't know where I was going to go because, again, with my art, I don't like to force things. Um, so I might have canvases that are sitting there for like two, three years. If I don't feel it, I'm not going to force it. And this was one of them. Um, I think I had on a playlist. And uh, Beyonce was definitely one of them. Um, Shy Wisdom, Toronto's very own. Uh, definitely one was on that playlist. And... Um, I don't even remember what else. Just those two artists really stuck out for me, and it, I kind of had it on on loop, and this is what came out. Gorgeous, yeah. gorgeous. Truly an artist, like truly inspired. Now, one of the things you mentioned is if you don't feel it, you don't touch it. Mm -hmm. Does that is that does that philosophy of being an artist? Because I've heard that before. Mm -hmm. Um, whether it be dancers, performers, like I've heard that before, like they have to be in that moment. How does that translate into real life for you? Like how does that impact your life? Um, it gets a little trickier with the life because uh, with art is so personal. So if I decide not to touch something, you know, that's pretty much on me. Um, but in, in life in general, there's other people involved. And sometimes you need to get outside of your comfort zone um, just to, um, I guess, to make the bigger picture work. So it's, it's a little bit different in that regard. Okay. So, and how would you then, so as an artist, obviously with, when you say you're not gonna touch the canvas until it feels right, mm -hmm. That tells me in a sense that working under pressure may not be your thing because you, you, you kind of go with the flow, you go with the moment, you go with the mood. Yeah. So how do you find it difficult working under pressure as an artist? Not at all. Okay. Um, I, I kind of, I'm under pressure, but it's still a comfort zone. You know what I mean? Okay, tell me about that. Um, so a, a specific example, I do live paintings at events, and a lot of times it's not, not pre-planned. I know there's eyes on me. Sometimes I'll forget my, my specific paints that I'm, I plan on using, and then I have to improvise. So um, that little bit of pressure that's there, it kind of allows me to stretch my capacity and get stronger. So that's usually how I deal with it. Okay. I just need to be calm. Um, I think you've practiced that really well. <laughs> I think you got that under lock. Yeah, I need to be calm because um, I know myself. Like I cannot function uh, when I'm extremely heated, when I'm scared, when anxiety hits. Um, so it's usually waiting and thinking and, and just feeling and, and strategizing. Okay. That's usually how I, I handle it. Very smart. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. Well, we're having some great conversation today with Kofi Frempong. We are going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. Hello, and we are back on the Make Your Mark talk show. And today we're having some great creative conversation here with Kofi Frempong. Um, and you know, Kofi, one of the things that you said uh, just after, just before the break, is you talked a little bit about you know not pushing it if you don't feel it, and talked about you know how well you actually do work in your uncomfortable zone. So what I wanted to go into a little bit about is looking at social media and how that has helped you and also helped your business as well. Mm. Um, well, I would say the majority of my sales comes from social media. Uh, the plus side to that is um, it allows me to expand my reach. So I sell a lot in the, in the States, um, more so in the States than in Toronto. Um, 
but it's by a small margin. But you know what? I've heard a lot of people say that. that they so sell more. they sell more in the States mm -hmm. than they do in Toronto. And why do you find that is? Um, you could be honest. You give me that smile. No, like I, I just like to consider like all different all the different reasons. Um, I feel like Toronto's like starting to catch up in regards to the art scene. Like we're starting to appreciate it more. Um, and we're starting to understand how to work with artists more and celebrate artists and give them legitimate platforms as our own platforms build. In the States, I feel like different parts of the States, they've been able to figure that out uh, really well. So like New York, um, Miami, Atlanta, um, those are some of the places where I've seen like a lot of activity in terms of the platforms that they give their artists, but also people like actually like buying pieces. Okay. Um, I have to acknowledge though, like the support from Toronto is it's there. It's definitely there for me. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. So we calling out our Toronto peeps. We still acknowledging y'all, mm -hmm. but the States has really definitely supported you and your growth there as well. Absolutely. So how do you deal with, sometimes Instagram obviously has worked really, really well for you mm -hmm. um, in terms of getting your business out there, helping your bottom line, mm -hmm. but how has that also impacted you from an artist standpoint where you now get to see other artists' work? Mm -hmm. And sometimes you get that whole competition and comparison that either you may feel from others or you may feel yourself. Um. The way I see competition is that, like, for me, it only serves one purpose. Like, it needs to make me better as an artist. So it needs to motivate me to go outside of what I'm already doing and, and be better. Um, otherwise, it has no use. So if I'm looking at another artist and I'm feeling discouraged, like, oh, I'm not good enough, then, again, I can't, there's certain emotions that I don't function well in mm -hmm. and that does nothing towards building me as a as an artist if I'm beating myself up while looking at other artists so if I see somebody who I think um, is more advanced on different levels let's say the business aspect or just like uh, what they produce as artists um, I look at that and try to learn from that and try to see what they're doing and see which pieces I can incorporate into mine. Um, but it's always from a, an appreciation standpoint. Um, sometimes I'll reach out, sometimes I won't get a, ret a reply. <laughs> That's okay. That's uh, okay. You know, because I also believe in learning vicariously through other people. So it's always a win win, pretty much. Okay. Yeah. You know, that. I had a mentor that said to me, she said, you know, if you knock him and they don't open the door, it's not your door. And be okay with it. Yeah. So, so Kofi, in, we had some really good conversation today. Mm -hmm. So in kind of your final thoughts with us, what would be three things that you'd want to leave our viewers with that lessons that you've learned throughout the years that you feel that has really helped to propel you forward? Um, the first, I would say... Uh, just being comfortable with yourself um, and everything that you do be genuine so when it comes to networking um, think of it more as re building relationships um, and not following a script but genuinely wanting to learn from other people and share parts of yourself um, I feel that building those type of relationships just opens you up for so much opportunities um second thing i would say is actually do it um a lot of people want to wait for the right amount of money mm -hmm. the right amount of resources meeting the right people and what happens is years go by and um just by you know taking little steps towards getting uh closer to your goal you're missing out on those opportunities when i first started I didn't know how to paint, <laughs> um, but I just did it. Uh, I didn't know anything about social media, but I just did it. And it's through making mistakes um, and some of my successes that I've been able to get to where I'm at. 
Um, the third thing I would say is um, really this four. Oh, no problem. Go for it. Yeah, absolutely. So definitely, you have to appreciate um, all the things that have been given to you. Um, so in terms of like the support that you're getting from people, I know it's very easy to to see what you're not getting. Uh, it's very easy to see the ways that people aren't supporting you if it doesn't fit you know, your, your master plan. Um, but I think it's really important to, to look at where your support is coming from. Um, if you have a small community, focus on appreciating that small community um, and eventually it'll grow. Yes. I feel like people are attracted to positive and genu genuine energy. Yes. Um, so when you're able to cultivate those type of spaces, like you'll see like a movement grow from just a little group, you know? Yep. Um, the fourth thing is, is just like, you, um, how do I explain this to make it very simple? Um, you don't have to be, it doesn't have to be perfect for us. I'm, I'm always trying to simplify things. That's yeah. The thing. No, no, no. It does um, not have to be perfect. Um, I, in everything that you do and think about yourself, um, it needs to be rooted in the belief that it should make you stronger and it should make you grow. My definition of love is anything that uh, promotes life and, and, and growth. Um, so when you think about your skills, your shortcomings, those thoughts should ultimately lead you to how can I be stronger? When you think about the connections that you make with people or even what you yourself are putting out there with people, um, how are my actions making me stronger, making the people that I love stronger? Um, just make everything work for you yes. in a genuine way, basically. I love that you said that because, you know, I told you a little bit on the break, uh, kind of my history with training. Mm. And when I go out and I train, I don't look at it as I'm training for me. Yes, I'm training for me. I have to condition my mind, mm. but I'm training for me that in the sense when I get in front of a group of young people and I'm working with them and they're like, oh my gosh, Kim, how do you know how to do that? Yeah. How'd you do this? How'd you do this? Like, I'm training for them to show them how strong they can actually be, but the strength doesn't start physical, it starts mental. And then now because I'm able to show them, some of them even seeing a woman of color being able to do certain things, mm -hmm. they're like, wow, I didn't know that you could do anything much more than doing your hair and doing your nails and choosing the right this and that. And you know, yeah, we are, we can do more. We are stronger than we appear to be, but everything that you're looking for is within. Mm -hmm. So when I do things, especially when I train, I'm training from a place of, yes, I need to train for me to be mentally stronger and physically stronger stronger but I'm also training for my community yeah. I'm trying I'm training to be a leader I'm training to really lead them and show them that it is possible and I say this all the time on social media for people people say oh my god you make this look so easy you do this you do that you're doing a million things I never hide my secret mm -hmm. my secret which really is not a secret is I take care of me first I come from a genuine place and I really want to help and support you and you can look you can ask me any questions I'm an open book so I love that you speak so much about being genuine because I believe if you just once again be yourself, mm -hmm. people can love and appreciate that, but they can also learn from that. And the goal is for you not to be like me, it's for you to be like you. Exactly. So, I mean, Kofi, we've had such great conversation today. How can people find you? How can they purchase this beautiful piece? Y'all, I can touch this, it feels so good. So how could people, reach you, mm -hmm. contact you, do you have a website, all of that great stuff. Share that with our viewers. Okay, so currently my website is under construction. Uh, bear with me. Um, As a business coach, I'm gonna say that is not a great start, but <laughs> nevertheless, let's go. But How can we reach you? I do live on Instagram. Um, you can find me there, it's Kofi's underscore art. That's K-O-F-I-S underscore A-R-T. Uh, you can send me a DM. Um, also, my information is there, my email address, um, different ways to contact me. I just started a YouTube channel, well, relaunched it. Um, so Good for I'm, you. I'm asking people to show me some love on that platform. Okay, yeah. subscribe. What is it on YouTube? It's uh, Kofi's Art. Kofi's Art. Yeah, it's just consistent. To, okay. Yeah. 
Okay, awesome. Well, Kofi, thank you so much for coming here today and sharing your wisdom, sharing your journey with us. Thank you for bringing this beautiful piece. I've seen it on Instagram, but now seeing it in person, I'm like in, it's breathtaking. Thank so thank you so very much. And thank you for the work that you continue to do within our community through your daytime job. Um, one of your full-time jobs, <laughs> as you would say. Thank you for the work that you do with in terms of creating safe spaces and i encourage you to start back freedom fridays because i just like how it sounds actually it just <laughs> it just sounds so freeing just already free freedom fridays so thank you all for watching today don't forget to follow us on instagram makeyourmark.ca and on facebook and of course you're watching the show so you should be on makeyourmark.ca as our website till we meet again